Are you still planning your drone flights on the RC, hoping you don't make any mistakes? I know it can be quite tiring, but there's a better solution. You can plan your flights on desktop, and this will allow you to firstly save time by pre-planning your flights before heading out into the field. Tackle larger projects with ease. Ensure you don't miss any data by checking correct overlap between planned routes. Increase flight safety by ensuring safe distance to the terrain. Let me show you how you can do that like a pro inside of EGCS. So, let me take you through the basics of flight planning uh, inside of EGCS. Now I'm just going to show you how you can plan a basic photogrammetry mission inside of EGCS and how you can connect your DJI drone to EGCS and launch your first mission. You can see already now have GCS open here and I just have an empty mission. If you want, you can rename it. So let's click here on the left side of the screen on create new route and then let's create a new route from scratch. Then just select the drone that you want to fly with. In this case, this will be the uh, Mavic 3 Enterprise drone. And then next you can see that here on the left side we're presented with our flight planning tool. So now let's choose the photogrammetry tool. You can see that this field is the field for the uh, camera. So this I'll just set as the wide camera of the uh, DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise. And now uh, we can just start placing our points here on the map. So I'm just placing them by holding down the shift button and then clicking on the map. Uh, once you're done with your initial area, you can also adjust the direction angle and then just wait for the initial flight to be calculated. Okay, so now we already have our initial mission here. If you want to see more detailed flight parameters, you can click up here on the elevation profile and then GCS will present to you the elevation profile of the route where you can see exactly at what altitude the drone will be flying. And you can also notice that as I'm moving the mouse, through the elevation profile that uh, we see a marker on the route that's following the trajectory of the drone. Also, what I oftentimes like to do is I like to add one waypoint before the photogrammetry mission and one after. Uh, while it's not a mandatory step, it's just something I personally prefer to do. So we can click here on add first waypoint and then add first point here. So assuming that we would be taking off from somewhere around this location, and then after our photogrammetry mission, we can add another waypoint here as well, just to have the drone return back home. Now, let's take a look at the photogrammetry mission itself. Let's again open up the elevation profile. And so we can see it actually here, the AGL altitude will be approximately 113 meters above the ground level. This is because we have currently the ground resolution value set to three centimeters, which means that one pixel in the image will correspond to three centimeters on the ground. So this value actually we can uh, we can now reduce a bit. So let's maybe reduce it to something like one. And now you can see we already have more uh, lines here in our photogrammetry mission. And if we take a look at the elevation profile, you might notice now that as we're moving through it, so now that the altitude is approximately 37 meters. Now, let's go through some other parameters. So flight speed currently is set to five meters per second. This we can increase to eight meters per second. Uh, overlap, let's set both forward and side overlap currently to 80%. These also you can adjust based on your preferences. The turn type, let's set to adaptive bank turn and altitude mode, let's keep as smart AGL. So the smart AGL altitude mode, this actually allows the drone to fly up even near vertical surfaces. This is a special uh, feature inside of the GCS Expert License, but if you're using GCS Pro, you can also simply use the normal AGL altitude mode. Further down here in the Advanced Parameters section, we have the AGL Tolerance. So this parameter actually governs how quickly will the drone adapt its altitude based on changes in the terrain elevation. So for example, now let's open up the terrain elevation profile, and you can now see that it's uh, essentially quite triangular shape here. But if we then change the AGL tolerance to, for example, three meters, this means that for every three meters of change in the uh, ground elevation, the drone will also change its altitude. And you can make it even more precise. You can also even set it to, let's say, uh, one meter, where you can see the drone now follows the terrain very, very accurately. Some other things which you can see here under the advanced parameters is the direction angle, the overshoot, so the overshoot allows you to extend the flight lines if uh, you, for example, want the drone to fly just a bit further on each survey line. And if you also want the drone to fly slower, you can also do that. If you don't want to use the overshoot, then you can just remove this parameter here. Then next, you can set the action execution to every point. If you want to do an oblique photogrammetry, you can also enable the double grid option. So this will create two grids in the same area, like so. 
But in this case, let's just keep it simple. Let's just have a single grid here. Additionally, if you want UGCS to add a single waypoint at every point where the drone will take an image, you can check this checkbox of additional waypoints. But in this case, this is not needed, so we can just skip that. And last but not least, here, if we go to actions, you can see what actions we have added in here by default. So by default, all photogrammetry missions, we will have two actions. One is the set camera attitude, which in this case sets the camera tilt 90 degrees downwards. And next is the set camera by distance, which will automatically have the camera make the uh, images. And so now once we have this mission ready, I'll show you how you can turn on your drone and uh, get it connected to UGCS. So first we can take our, our remote controller and let's just turn it on. And whilst turning on, we can also turn on our drone. In this case, we're using the Mavic 3 Enterprise drone, but the process is exactly the same also for DJI M300, M350, and M30 drones. But the GCS supports a lot more drones outside of these. Full list of supported drones is in our website, link in the description. So currently you can see I have the DJI Pilot 2 app open up here on the remote controller. There's actually two ways in general how you can use the Mavic 3 Enterprise drone with UGCS. Number one is you can use it actually directly with the Pilot 2 app. So uh, this allows you to firstly have the drone's telemetry directly inside of UGCS and you can have the routes automatically sync up to the remote controller. But the downside of this is that you can't con control the drone directly from UGCS screen. So in this case, I'll be showing you how you can connect uh, the Mavic 3 Enterprise drone to UGCS using the UGCS companion app. So first off, let's close uh, DJI Pilot 2. So now let's just proceed and open up the UGCS companion app. And then once it's started, press up here in the top left most corner and you just need to select uh, your computer. If you want to find your computer's IP address, which you want to use, then inside of UGCS, you can open up this um, menu and then just, you can see the address here under the connect from DJI Pilot 2. But the address which you will be using in both apps is exactly the same. So here we're just double checking to make sure we're connecting to the correct computer. Just before that, make sure that both the remote controller and the computer are on the same Wi-Fi network. If they are, then you will be able to uh, access it. And now once the drone is connected, you should be able to see it within a GCS screen. Now you can see that it doesn't have any GPS satellites. Uh, that's normal because the drone is currently indoors. Uh, but then basically the process of launching it on mission is very simple. You can just upload the route to the drone and then start it. Uh, to demonstrate this, I will now just be putting the drone in the simulator mode. This can be done by going to the menu, then uh, going into other settings and enabling simulator mode. But again, just keep in mind, I'm doing this just for demonstration purposes. So of course, when you turn on a real drone, then it will already appear exactly where you are uh, located. Now we can see the drone here on the map. You can see we have GPS satellites as well. And then to start the uh, drone on this route, first we have to do upload route. Then once the route is uploaded, you will see it also here on the companion screen. And so here you can notice that you see the drone's home location, drone's current position, as well as the route that the drone will fly. And then to launch the drone, you can simply press here on start route, then confirm auto mode. And so now you can see that the drone is already taking off. So it's going now to the first waypoint and then already moving to start uh, flying the route. And so now you can see the drone is already flying on the route, and you also might notice that the path which the drone has already flown through, this is marked in this dark green color. Now, GCS actually allows you to send more commands to the drone. So, for example, if you want the drone to hold the current position, you can just send the hold command. If you also want the drone to return back home, you can also send that. Or if you want it to simply continue the route, you can also uh, set it to continue. And now, for example, just to show you how you can continue the route after a battery change, let's maybe have the drone return uh, back home. So imagine we've changed the batteries, and then now we can press again on upload route. So now you can see you have three different options. You can either continue the route, so continuing will make the drone continue the route from the breakpoint or the point where this dark blue line stopped. Uh, number two is start route from the beginning, and number three is starting route from an exact waypoint. In this case, we'll simply use the continue option, press here on confirm, and so now you can see that after the route has already been uploaded from the continue point, we can just select start route, 
And so now the drone is starting to move to the breakpoint and it will continue the mission from there. And that's it. That's uh, how you can plan a simple mission inside of UGCS. But keep in mind, this is just a very tiny part of everything that UGCS can do. There's a lot more and this will cover in future videos. So if you want to try it yourself, visit our website for a free 14-day trial, link down in the uh, description. And make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on more content on drone flight planning, drone surveys, and much more. So see you in the next one. Bye.